Ja si myslím, že sme na správnom mieste. Čiže museli niekde túto do tohoto svahu no. naraziť. Dobre, tak môžeme skúšiť tam. Budú, tam by mohlo byť to miesto dopadu. These men are aviation cadets. A short while ago, they too were average we were all a bunch of happy American kids, family. even a pilot. They sent a bunch of kids up there to fight a war. <laughs> I don't think people know how much war is a business of children. Most of the people who fight in wars are not really adult. As big and bulk as I am, have plenty of loose weight. They put me in the smallest space in the airplane, the ball turret. So I was happy, and the Air Corps was happy, until Hitler's little hunchmen got the best out of us. I think we young men were reacting to that fact that so many people were being mistreated, being persecuted, murdered, and uh, it seemed to be nobody to, or not enough people to stop them. Počas druhej svetovej vojny podnikala 15. letecká armáda Spojených štátov amerických zo svojich základní v Taliansku nálety na nemecké strategické ciele v Európe, aby ochromila komunikácie a zásobovanie armád nepriateľa. Bombardovaniu sa nevyhlo ani Slovensko, ktoré dovtedy priamo nezasiahli vojnové udalosti. The first mission that I flew on to Ploesti, to the oil field. Our leader, he blew up. Boom. It took any aircraft right into the airplane and it exploded in the airplane. See the bodies of the crew, the bodies that fly by. There were bodies falling. About 54 airplanes, 10 men on each airplane. That's 500 men that were getting blown out of their airplane. I never thought of being shot down, never. I saw many people uh, bailing out or jumping out of the airplane, but I never thought of uh, that happening to me. Priemerný vek lecov bol 19 až 20 rokov. Povolali ich do armády priamo zo školských hlavíc. Boli viac chlapcami ako mužmi. Boli vrhnutí do víru vojny a museli rýchlo dozrieť. Mali šancu jednak piatim, že dokončia predpísaný počet misí a zostanú pritom živí a zdraví. Videli zomierať svojich priateľov v zostrelených lietadlách no museli sa z toho rýchlo spametať a vrátiť sa k svojim bojovým úlohám. I was in my turret then shooting the airplane. And our plane was on fire and our pilot called us to bail out. I didn't think about anything else but getting out of the plane. I finally landed in a wheat field 
and I could hear a dog barking, and two farmers came up to us. We didn't know where we were. Uh, we got out our maps. We carried silk maps, and they showed us we were Slovakia. Slovakia, I said, I don't even know where Slovakia is. Prvé lietadlá boli zostrelené nad našim územím v júni 1944. Leci boli vopred informovaní, že v prípade havárie sa majú pokúsiť čo najskôr dostať na Slovensko, pretože obyvatelia tejto krajiny sa správajú voči Američanom priateľsky. Sú ochotní poskytnúť im pomoc, na rozdiel od obyvateľov iných štátov, kde lecov pozoskoku často ubili sekerami a vidlami. Keď nám doviezli do Grinavy amerických lecov ako zajadcov, mal som 11 rokov. No tak chlapci, viete, každý bol zvedavý, čo sú to za ľudí. No a tak čím ďalej, tým viacej sme sa približovali k bráne a k plotu. A tak poznali sme dobre ich denný režim. Grinava bol an army camp. We had a couple of guards. They didn't have guns, they had bayonets. Uh, we played volleyball outside the fence. Pravidelne každý deň okolo 9. hodiny pozerali na tých svojich kamarátov, ktorí sú v kabinkách lietadiel, ktoré nad nimi lietajú. Pokrikovali, gestikulovali, niektoré vyskakovali, nebolo ich veľa. Keď skončilo toto predstavenie, zobrala sa celá skupina Američanov s jedným vojakom a išli na morské oko. Some of the men got pretty close to some of the gals there and we got the cornfield with them and we had a great time. People say, well, why didn't you escape? Who would want to leave there? You know, it was marvelous. Nabojnica. A je americká, áno. Je to 44. rok. Mne to letadlo horelo, tak tá nábojnica explodovala. Je to vidieť, že proste je roztrhnutá. Takže prešla tou katastrofou. To musela byť pekná kríza pre nich. Panika na palube, keď horí lietadlo a vlastne už im išiel len jeden motor. My sme byli štyri sestry tady, my sme pásli tie husy. No a včel vyletelo letadlo, odnekát, hrozne zavijalo. Niže i kušček, ne to letadlo tak, tak to robio, tak to. A vyletel z neho čovjek, a jak spadejo je na tých rolách, tak to. No, oni ho trepali, ale to tam bil zabitý na mieste. Můj tatko ho na koně vezli a neměli ho kde dát, tak ho dali do hasičské zbrojnice na zem. Ještě jakási kontrola musela přijít, až potom ho mohli pochovat. Starí rodiče byli v Americe a věděli, že ten člověk je z Ameriky, z oného, tak oni cítili s ním. Cítili s ním, že ta rodina se někdy bude za ním hlásit. A my bychom se špatně cítili, kdyby jsme nechali ho na pospas s vírencom nejakým, lebo nepomohli mu. Well, 
we go up and hit Black Hammer, which is one of the hardest targets, oil refineries. I'm sitting up there looking directly at it, 25,000 feet down there. And all of a sudden, wham, everything's just shaking apart. Look out, right motor is on fire. The flames all go right past my ball turret. It's with the smoke. And that's when I said, prepare to bail out. Toto sú plechy od vojny 44. čo tu v Americké lietalo v Bombardier B-17. My sme ako chasní tu boli. Jako letelo, vrchov Čeky svrčí nám lámalo na šírku krídel. A asi takých 10 metrí boli zlámané tí vrchov Čeky, aj možná 20. A potom už lomilo celé svrčiny. A celé svrčiny, my sme tu prišli, pod ním boli tí svrčiny takto zhodené. Motory odletené, tri motory boli pred ním asi 5 metrí, dva spolu, tretí niži a jeden bol skúľaný toto dolu. Krydla boli celé, len tak boli prirazené pri tom lietadle. Celé, ešte tam boli dobré plechy, tam sa dobré plechy brali s neho. Či horolo bez vzduchu, to nemôžem potvrdiť, to môže potvrdiť si vás. Len toľo otec povedal, že, že mu povedal zasiahle dva motory. Na horách partizáni a tu vedli boli Nemci ubytovaní. Oni vedeli, že sa tu desi skrýva ten silas. Pomocila by voľa Božia, že k nám prišiel a si zachránil život. Bolo to test deň. A z hory prišli Nemci a to ozbrojení všetko. My sme mali psa, on už ich zastavil tuto na dvore. Šila sedel tuto na tej lavice, aj my sme tu boli všetci. Pán, len čo vybehnú cichohrozným skutom tam a už sa Nemci hrnuli do dverí. Len partizán, partizán. Germans came looking for me, uh, Rizak's family, in the hayloft. And I was right in the corner, curled up just as small as I can get. It was laying on planks. You could see through it. If I had urinated or anything, that would have been a dead giveaway. Well, we them test the party dolu, like I chodili do neutra. Najprv pušky držali v rukách, ale keď sa už otec nimi dal do debaty, vtedy už ti pušky všetky všetky zložili. Opreli o ten schod. Možná nebo vedem s nimi sa dohovoriť, to tak je zle. Potom máme predávať na Pražila vajca, sme mali kury, škvarenice so škvarkyma. Tí šesti sa najedli a keď mali ísť preč, zebral jeden ten Nemec tú pušku s tým bodákom, vyšiel na ten poval a odsila sa bol asi dva metre. A pedá, nek partizán. Kebo boli naši, tak my nežijeme. Aj tento dom nestojí, vypália všetko. Oni sa vzpomínali, And boy, my heart, I knew they were going to hear me up there. My heart would give me away uh, the sound of it, but it didn't. They got out. We watched them go down on the uh, road. They went down, and they all went down towards town. I was saying, Yah, Bamsy, you know what that is? Yah, Bamsy. And he called them every name that he could think of. Come back here, I've got your job done. 
You lousy. That's the reason you're losing the war. You're bad soldiers. Come on up here. You can find them. I still got them. Tu bol v silách ukrytý, tu v tom sene. Žíme sa, musím tu zdržovať, nemohol sa hýzbe môcť zdržovať. Perinu mal a mám tam aj kýbel na toaletu a mám kámu to musela vynášať. Hana, she was the most tender, worried with all of us. She wanted to make sure that I, as her adopted son, got through safely. So I always called her my angel. They call me a hero and I keep telling them, the Slovaks were the heroes. They had nothing. The Germans took what they didn't have and went even deeper. And they would shoot any of them just for shooting pleasure. To bolo pod skrytom. Ja ani v detstve som sa nepriznal nikomu, že tu je u nás. Tak bratcovia boli. Otec povedal, keď nám budú aj peniaze dávať, nevideli ste nič a nikoho nevedeli. Without them willing to risk their lives, the lives of their children, the family, being hanged, being shot, They're just being tortured to death. How many of us would do this for a total stranger? On a bomb run, I always took my helmet off because when I go over the bomb site, the helmet come down like this and I push it up, go boom, boom, and take that damn thing off. We were on the bomb run and for some reason, I'll never know, I reached back and I put my helmet on. And when, just when I did, boom, hit piece of flak. It actually should have gone right through my head. And the gasoline was running, the stream running out. I opened the bomb bay doors, the gasoline just poured out. They said, if anybody had lit a cigarette in that airplane, I just bailed out, and I started to walk. There was a hole there. Somebody must have dropped a bomb. Put my gun up on the side, and man, I fell sound asleep. Time sleeping, and all of a sudden I hear, whoosh, whoosh. Hear the farmers coming. <laughs> At about that time, I saw them, they saw me, I grabbed my gun, and I pointed at them, they're going, no, no, no. And the one guy said, stay here, and uh, we'll come and get you tonight. My knees were all swollen up, I could hardly walk. They took me to the hospital there, and. Keď v auguste 1944 vypuklo na Slovensku povstanie proti fašistom, americkí leci utiekli zo zajateckého tábora v Grinave a snažili sa dostať na slobodné územie ovládané povstalcami. Pomáhali im pritom partizáni a miestni odbojári. 
Nie všetkým sa to ale podarilo. When we got to the edge of Trnava, we're crossing the bridge, the lights come on, and they're waiting for us. The Slovaks, the bad Slovaks. So they uh, take us to the local jail, and the next day, and we went to Vienna, to the Hotel Metropole, which was a Gestapo headquarters. A piece of the shrapnel came right up through the co-pilot's seat and just tore him all apart. When the pilot told us to bail out, he said he couldn't see much of anything because of the things that flew out of the co-pilot, the skin and bones or whatever was on the windshield. I think the Germans had some planes out looking for me the first day or two. But after that, I didn't hear any more planes. There was only me in the mountains. So I drank water out of the streams and I ate blackberries. So I just walked and walked until I could find uh, civilization. <laughs> V septembri 1944 pristáli na letisku tri duby americké bombardéry. Tie spolu so zbraňami pre povstalcov priviezli aj spravodajskú skupinu agentov OSS, ktorú viedol poručík James Holt Green. Boli medzi nimi agenti so slovenským pôvodom. Chceli pomôcť povstalcom v ich boji proti fašistom. Cieľom misie bolo evakuovať zo stralených lecov do Talianska a získavať informácie o nemeckých bojových operáciách. The place that they took me to there were 28 other escape POWs and like me escapees or evadees and they got us all together. So the airplane that I was supposed to go on taxi too far down the airfield and he got in a swamp. Everybody got on there, everybody got on the wings and pushed, you know. We got him out. Away we went. Back to Italy. I thought, here we are. Now we're, go we're gonna go back to Italy. The next mission, they're gonna send a plane on. But it rained the next day, so they didn't come. Then they told us, I think the man that ran the mission said we have to get out of there because the Germans are getting close to Banska Bystrica 
and we will all be captured if we don't get out. Keď Nemci obsadili Banskú Bystricu a prezident Tiso verejne demonstroval svoj vazalský vzťah k fašistom, spravodajská skupina OSS spolu s letcami utiekla dohovor pred špeciálnymi nemeckými jednotkami, ktoré prenasledovali Američanov a povstalcov. K Američanom sa pridala aj Slovenka Mária Gulovichová, ktorá im robila tlmočníčku a sprievodkyňu. Podnikala riskantné cesty pomedzi nemecké hliadky do neprístupných osád, aby zohnala potraviny a pomohla Američanom prežiť. I just joined the 14 Americans that were with this OSS outfit and we all went up in the mountains along with the village people. It was the worst weather I think I was ever in. And the snow was clear up above our knees up there in the mountains, Tatra Mountains. The Slovaks from the town, they were not in good health. And when they would slouch down to rest, they never got up. And when we saw that, We said, hey, that's probably what's going to happen to us. So if we don't get out of here, we talked to the man that was at the head of the mission. When he found out we were going to leave the group, he said, when we got back to the States, we would be in big trouble because he went against, we went against his orders. His orders were, don't leave. And we said, if we stay with you, we're probably going to die. Let's see, Dali Prednos, the Zayatiu pred zmrznutím v horách. Podium Bierom ich Nemci prepadli, zbili a odvliekli do Zayateckých táborov. Skupina OSS utekala stále vyššie do hôr. Spávali pod holým nebom, vyčerpaní a prechladnutí, trpeli na omrzliny. Nachádzali sa na pokraji kolapsu. Nakoniec sa uchýlili do horskej chaty pod Homolkou. Špeciálna jednotka nemeckého abvéru ich pomocou slovenského zradcu vypátrala a väčšinu členov misie zajala. Márii Gulovichovej a dvom Američanom sa pritom podarilo uniknúť. V čase, keď skupina OSS poručíka Hold Greena bojovala v horách o svoje prežitie, ďalší členovia misie, kapitán Edward Baranský a Daniel Pavletič, zišli z masívu Polany a našli útočisko pred Nemcami v rodine Jozefa Vrťu v obci Detva Piešť. Oni prišli k nám len tak, že si oddychnú, umýjú sa. No, a potom poprosím kapitán starého oca či by nemohli ich za čas ubytovať. No a teraz zostala dilema, že čo, čo s nimi, lebo to bolo... Viete, báli sa naši tiež, že chodili Nemci všade už tu okolo. Hlavný bol u nás starý otec. No oni sa tak dohodli s kapitánom, že keď by ich náhodou chytili, že musia hovoriť, že nevedia, kto sú, že si oni mysleli, že sú Nemci a to musia tvrdiť, aj keby čo bolo. Kapitán, on mal takú záľubu, so mnou sa vždy hrával. Si stal, rozkročil si nohy a ja som mu okolo nôh sa hrala. Potom ma chytil na dlaň a tak to popodpoval, že ako lietadlo lieta. On mal takého syna o dva mesiace mladšieho, nechal doma cerku, nahal doma. Ja som mu to tak kompenzovala. Otec doniesol mapu a pozerali, že kde je front. 
sa to stalo. Pod každým oknom bol Nemec s automatom aj pri každých dverách. Všetkých postavili k múru a ja ako dieťa som behala tam pomedzi nich, tak moja mama sa zavšie za mnou otočila a chytila ma za ruku a videla, že Baranský dá čo chce povedať. Keď ich už raportovali, tak mama schytila taký uterák a dala mu na krk. A on povedal, že píšte mojej žene. Zobrali aj mojich starých rodičov obidvoch, aj mojho oca na gestapo dozvolená. Moja mama tá pozháňala, čo mohla tam, čo boli aj predsedovia hlinkových strán a toto, viete, kaďakých svetkov. Na základe toho sa podarilo ako starých rodičov zachrániť. No bola to zrada. Bola to zrada. Keby to nie, tak by sa boli zachránili. A naši si to vždy vyčítali, že im nezachránili životy. Kapitána Baranského spolu s Danielom Pavletičom Nemci deportovali do koncentračného tábora Mauthausen. Tu sa stretli so zajatou skupinou misie OSS na čele s Hold Greenom. Po sérii brutálnych vypočúvaní a chladnokrvného mučenia i mesesáci prikázali, aby sa vyzliekli a po jednom vstupovali do miestnosti, kde sa budú fotiť. Postavili ich gustene a strieľali zo zadu priamo do tyla. Mrtvoli potom spálili v krematóriu a ich popol rozptýlili na obrovskej kope nevinných obetí z celej Európy. We were on our 12th mission to Vienna, Austria. Our greatest enemy was German anti-aircraft, Flak. It was just a, a great fear, I guess, maybe kind of like a tornado come in and, and you can't do anything except just grip and hold on, you know, and maybe say a prayer. My oxygen tube was cut by flak so that I would pass out unless I took the tube after two or three minutes, held my hand over the hole and went with pure oxygen and probably that saved my life because it kept me from being panicked. When I landed in the, the top of a little ridge there, so I followed the track northward, and a few minutes later, I saw the uh, Forrester. And of course, he was beckoning to me to come to him. And I thought, well, he looks like a little guy. I might have been three or four inches taller than he was. And, and I said, I can probably handle him if he tries to capture me and turn me into the Germans. Thought that in my mind, you know. When I got to him, he was so gracious so friendly, all my fears were gone, felt like I'd had a bad dream and it was over. So I was very glad when I saw little boys, schoolboys, and I thought perhaps they had been sent to find me and to lead me to the partisans. But, uh, When we saw a German patrol, they said, hey, here he is. And they drove me to Tristine. There were three of my crew already there. I made four. A German guard took us to uh, Vienna and then to uh, interrogation center in uh, over Jerusalem. We started the drill. 
teraz počujeme nejaký zvuk letadla, prichádzali k vám a jedno letadlo asi bolo zasiahnuté, lebo také niečo. Stromy popadané, odrezané, tak jak to kosil, tí stromy kosia, tu padlo na tomto mieste, jak sme tu teraz. Keď som ja sem prišiel, už tu boli nejakí ľudia. A za chvíľočku potom prišli nemeckí vojaci. Odhánali nás odtiaľto. Ale my ako chalani, no tak zvedaví, išli sme do blízkosti. A keď sme sa dostali, keď ten, tí vojaci boli trošičku tak, že nás nepozorovali, my sme sa predsa len tam šmykli a podali sa nám nejaký ten náboj, proste si uchmatnúť pre seba. Som ich ľutoval, tých ľudí. Čo sú vám ľudí, chlapci? Mladí chlapci, bo 18 ročí, 20 ročí. Mladí chlapci. A tu tej zeme padnú. Je to, čo je to? Predsa len sadnú do takého stoja, ísť také kilometre. To si si uvedomil, toľké kilometre. A riskovať svoj mladý život sa mi zdalo také dosť kruté. To bola odvaha týchto mladých mužov. Až riskovali zbytočne svoje mladé životy. I was in the Bombay and one of the gunners called up and says number two engines on fire. We tried to get the pilot out of the seat, even the co-pilot, Sullivan, couldn't get him out. I was the last person in the back end of the aircraft before bailing out. I should have taken time to call the pilot and tell him the back end is all clear. But I didn't do it. I just left him. Then the pilot sent the co-pilot to the back to check and see whether the back of the aircraft was empty. And the pilot had no chance of getting out because the wing started breaking off and we had no flying ability anymore. I still look back and I said, I should have, I could have, but I didn't. All over with and too late. Doviedli potom tých dvoch chalanov, to nám a tak hovorili, že teda budú u nás. Ten Lorenc, ten rozumel slovenský, keď mal tú babku Češku. Sprvú už tak to bolo taký cudzí, no, lebo oni sa báli, nevedeli, kde sú a už, že sme sa potom už tak, jak sa hovorí, že zočili, že sme sa skamarádili, no tak oni už potom nás učili aj dobré ráno, aj všetko teda tak povedať, aj čítať sem vedela. A však už asi, ja by som to one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, twen. No však to ma učili, tak čo sa som vedela, no. Ja si pamätám, keď havarovalo to lietadlo, mama doviezla do Lamaného z Livena. Povedala, nesmíš nikomu nic povedať a žádne kamarátky domu. A to bolo jasné heslo. On Žil u nás v byte. No, počúval rádio, rád jedol a normálne žil, ako náš. I wonder how many Americans would do that if they were at war and have someone land in your yard with a parachute, you know, and you take them in and treat them like a brother. In the other countries, we were told that people, peasants, might be carrying pitchforks, axes or whatever, and they're going to go ahead and just butcher you up. 
and these just hugged me. So that told me I am with friends, not enemies. Ten Lorenz, on mal úžasný strach. On, on sa úplne trásil a on keď aj niekto prišiel, on hneď, on, on hneď si išiel prisadnúť k tému človekovu a hneď už len išiel načúvať, pravda, umýkal sa, lebo k nám chodili ľudia, nejaké zvesty chodili, pravda povedať, kde sú Nenci, alebo ako ustupujú, kde sú partizáni a čo je. On sa úplne chvel, no bodaj by sa nechvel. That feeling was always there, that it could be your turn. And you don't know what that turn might be. Getting killed, getting captured, or anything in between. Tak sme sa báli, keď nám aj ľudia, pravda, keď chodievali k nám a hovorili, že teda by si dali naši preč že keď tu prídu Nemci, že teda nás vystrieľajú a že vystrieľajú pol dediny. Ja si myslím, že keď ich skovávali, tak ich skovávali z lásky, aby im zachránili život. A keď boli moji rodičia v Amerike, že keď oni tam boli toľko, takže im tú lásku, že zase tým Amerikánom, že sa zvrátili. Ja si to tak myslím, že to za peniaze nerobím, ale to robím z lásky a že komu si dobre som urobila, že ma dosť bude po dobre spomínať. The Bakars had to be a meeting point or something. And then when we were there, then they start more my crew members were coming that the Slovaks found. And we all went there and got a little sleeve on. I helped the pond make sleevo. I know all about a still and I know about cranking it. Oh yeah, top man in making a booze. <laughs> Stefan Bachart had the boy, the son. I guess he was about two years older than I was. I was 19, he was probably 21. The girls, uh, Betka and Anna, uh, one of them was pretty and one of them wasn't. <laughs> Betka was kind of cute. Me and uh, Anichka had the thing going. Oh, yeah. Old Pawnee had the wedding all made out already. I says, What's the, what do you mean talk about wedding? Hey, talk about no wedding, I gotta go home. <laughs> you couldn't uh, think about falling in love or nothing. You don't know if you're going to end up s sitting on a hand grenade or a bayonet of a gun or something. Nah. And then you were always worried you didn't want to get captured because what's going to happen to the people that is keeping you? All them farmers out there that helped us, they put their life on, their, on the table to help us. And we didn't do nothing for them. I think they were uh, patriots, Slovak patriots, who were risking their lives, really, by hiding an enemy flyer there. Uh, certainly were. In many cases, earlier in the year, uh, there were reports of many Slovaks being shot, trying to help partisans and down American or allied flyers. And still, they, they didn't care. They thought it was their duty. From the Bacars, we went to the Partisans 
camp. John Repta was in charge there. The Germans were more scared of him than he was of the Germans. They're trying to teach us in one day how to fight with a, a machine gun. It was a Gulamat, is that right? Automatic rifle. But he got us out in the field and we practiced running and getting down and not shooting, but acting like we were going to shoot. Put us through maneuvers, so to speak. We thought, what is this? We're going to be partisan? John Zabrowski, he was a co pilot from other crew, and he talked to Mr. Repton. This isn't our line of business. We don't know nothing about ground fighting. He says, we want to get back to Italy so we can go flying again and drop some more bombs. I never thought that we might get killed, but Zabrowski did. And he, he got kind of fearful. He, he told me, he said, Gene, if the uh, Germans take this place, they'll shoot us on sight. They found out we're Americans in civilian clothes with the partisans and armed. They'll shoot us without even thinking twice. Repta had a feeling that something was going to be happening. So he sent us all away. Then the next day we heard shooting and everything going on. The Germans found the compound of the partisans. They had a battle out there. They wiped out the compound. If we would have been there, that would have been the end for us. Na Vianoce, na štedrý večer, všetci prišli k nám a spievalo sa. Oni spievali po anglicky, Jingum Bell a neviem teda dali. A my zas naše pesničky sme ze sestru aj s rodičmi spievali. My family didn't know where I was alive or dead. I was just missing in action. Particularly on Christmas Eve, uh, I started thinking about my family and I got so sad I wanted to go outside and I went out beside Bockhart's house to a little bare tree with all the limbs off. Maybe it was a little plum tree. Slevo, Slevo tree, uh, strum. What's tree, strum, whatever. And uh, I actually prayed that uh, they might know or have a feeling somehow that I was alive and not grieve, because here I was so thoroughly taken care of and couldn't let anybody know. I actually wept out there in the snow by myself. Mamička ta cítili s nimi, že nejsou doma, pravda, a že tež ty matky jejich tak nad nimi jako smutia, jako i oni, mamička. Tak jako jejich synovi, jaké by boli. We got to Wild Alley, we thought we should make an attempt to break out and go to the Russian front. Most ridiculous idea you can think of. Miss Bockhart begged us not to go with tears in her eyes. That somehow she was able to communicate with us. She couldn't speak hardly any English about how dangerous it was, and we didn't need to do that. And actually, we did. Keď už teda povedali, že odchádzajú, ďakovali velice, no a mamičke to bolo lúto. To ich trápilo, že zle pochodia, že aby radšej vydržali, no však oni nevydržali, už utekali ako na čierno a tak aj zle dopadli. The 
Germans, they sent out a scouting party. So the scouting party come over, to, and that's how they caught us. In, but they didn't catch us in the house. And we were running, trying to get away from them, and they started shooting at us. And I looked, turned around, and they, one at a time, they were falling on the ground. I figured, I better fall down, too. Sullivan was right behind me. He said, speak Slovak, Gene. Don't let them know we're American. I said, we're American flyers. Don't shoot. And the guy started hailing, screaming, Hans, off. Hans, off. And I was scared to death, naturally. When uh, they put us in the prison at Solitsa, the next morning we were threatened pretty bad about being shot. Sully had already been interrogated, who gave us the clothes, who had been trying to feed us. No plane had gone down recently. It had been three and a half months since the plane went down right in that area. You know, and where have you been? Who's hiding you? We don't know what to do with you except shoot you. The war was almost over, wasn't it? And we are probably lucky that it was that late. Because even the SS and Gestapo had softened their technique or their whatever torturing methods they all use so long. Čo sa týka Sullivana, mama mu dala adresu. Dal si ju do hodinek. A keď ho zobrali, Nemci, my sme nevedeli, či tú adresu má v tých hodinkách, či si ju vyložil. Zo strachom sa čakalo, že kedy dvojdu zasa Nemci pre nás, lebo majú adresu jedného amerického pilota. Bola to nezodpovednosť nielen voči sebe, ale nezodpovednosť voči tým, ktorí ich pol roka ukrývali. This is a piece uh picked up where my air cra airplane crashed. We picked it up in 1989 uh, in Skuchanka, near Dobravoda, when Jan Mabinchak helped me and my three children find the place where, our, uh, where the crash took place. That shook me up a little, seeing those pieces. I mean, uh, that's when I, I say that was really the end of the war <laughs> for me. We've lived in the best generation, really. Even though we went to war. Maybe we learned a lot going to war, I don't know. I don't go to many reunions because I don't know anybody there. My whole family in the Army is gone. All of my buddies that I was with in the airplane are gone. I think there's only two of us, Mom Garden and me. This year we lost track of Sullivan, our co-pilot. And then getting older and everything's going to shot. So it's all going downhill now. So I can sit in the corner sometime and think about the good old days. And I think about a lot about Slovakia. I never forgot them, still haven't. That's a chapter in my life will always be there. Tí americkí leci tiež si to predstavovali inak. 
hrdinovia boli z ich pohľadu, veď išli dobrovoľne. A u nás boli tí, ktorí dobrovoľne zasa ich zachraňovali. Takže hrdinstvo. To je také hrdinstvo, ktoré by som v živote nechcela. Aby sa zopakoval. Americké rodiny sa ťažko vyrovnávali so stratou svojich najbližších. Po vojne prichádzali na Slovensko, aby sa dozvedeli pravdu o tom, ako skončil ich život. Mladí amatérskí historici spolu s miestnymi obyvateľmi postavili na miestach, kde zahynuli letci, symbolické kríže, ktoré nesú ich mená. Pre mnohých ľudí sú to iba bezmenní hrdinovia. Ale oni si tým chceli uctiť pamiatku Američanov, ktorí nebojovali len za svoju krajinu, ale podielali sa na porážke fašizmu v celej Európe, vrátane Slovenska. Letci, ktorí prežili havárie lietadiel, prišli po mnohých rokoch znovu na Slovensko, aby prejavili vďačnosť svojim záchrancom. V určitom zmysle sa na Slovensku druhýkrát narodili.